I'm Martin and welcome to another great edition of MP Astro. Now as you can remember from the last video I did, I featured this super tuned EQ5 mount and so what I did was modify the, the existing Vixen dovetail clamping system on the EQ5 and I've upgraded it with the AMD modified clamping system which I can fit not just Vixen dovetails but also Lost Mandy dovetails as well. Now as you can see from the last video this has really um, up the performance of my mount making uh, the clamping a lot more secure I now can trust this on a lot of weight even with my max of 180 I can clamp this uh, clamp this system on my EQ5 without having to worry about uh, the telescope sliding off or falling off from the mount so I've had it for about a good good six months and it's been an absolute godsend however on my other mount my NEQ6 I was a bit horrified when I saw this so guys and girls let's take a look of my uh, observatory and uh, I'm going to show you the uh, the Pegasus Astro because I know a few of your viewers have been asking what does it look like uh, with the setup in the observatory with the NEQ6 and believe it or not massive difference already as you can see here I've just got one blue cable to the laptop and I've got one power cable to the leisure battery and that is it everything else as you can see you've got the ST4 lead I will be looking at pulse guiding don't get me wrong guys and girls some people are saying that ST4 is obsolete absolute rubbish I prefer ST4 lead because it's reliable it might not give me the best guiding ever but at least it runs 100% as long as the cables fine absolutely fantastic we've got the cable to uh, the the box for the power this part here is the um, GP this is the uh, Skywatcher Wi-Fi that doesn't really intrude much of the problem with the guiding and the tracking but as you can see everything upwards the, ST, the USB cable for the guide scope all the dew heaters everything from the CCD the QHY9 everything is all the way up and it's free from the axis both axes the deck and the RE axis ignore that that's a dew adapter if I'm going to mount another setup without this power box I just left it in but as you can see there's the main cable to the leisure battery uh, this is just the Skywatcher Wi-Fi I will be looking at controlling my computer that way but I'm waiting on my Wi-Fi booster so that when it comes through I'm not going to rely on that I'm going to try and control my computer and get Wi-Fi that way but at the moment I'm waiting for a Wi-Fi booster so I can control uh, the, the, that through the, uh, the USB cable for the time being but as you can say what a massive difference that makes really is fantastic really is worth that upgrade and the velcro is quite strong right, it's not budging it flexes a bit but it's not too bad anyway enough on that now you've seen what it looks like uh, with the setup it's definitely worth the investment and I've got no tip cables to trip around possibly tripping over and having a nasty accident again which I don't want so very nice setup definitely worth the money and uh, I can't really grumble I really can't grumble guys and girls so from that on I'm just going to show you the clamping system and as you can see we're just going to take a closer look 
Now, as you can see here, and uh, we've been uh, watched by the neighbour's cat. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys and girls. It, it, she startled me. Her name's uh, her name is Nelly, and Nelly's quite nosy. All right, especially when I set up my observatory, she comes round and has a look. All right, what I'm doing. But she, you know, it's just one of those things, you know, you get used to it. But she doesn't bother me. But anyway, this is what I'm trying to show you. As you see here, the clamp is slanted. And this is what's not boosting me with much confidence at all. And you can see it doesn't even sit right onto the dovetail. Which is really worrying, really, because... It, it, it it's just not it's just not right and to be honest with you, um i really need to get that replaced yeah it's quite scary to be honest with you. now it it doesn't come off don't get me wrong it hasn't come off yet thank god but uh it does not sit right at all and that's the reason why i'm replacing it so yeah it's slanted there and it's not sitting right on the dovetail not one bit and i'm not happy with that at all really really is um really is quite scary and that's why i need to replace uh that clamping system don't get me wrong it's okay but when you're putting something big as that it just lost mandy wise it's not great so that's why i need to change it so as you can see I was absolutely horrified where my telescope service 150mm triplet was sitting. And don't forget, I've got a lot of money there that's on that Lost Mandy. You know, I've got my CCDs on there, Gaia scopes, I've got the Pegasus power box, I've got loads of equipment mounted on the NEQ6. And has that was sitting very awkward, that Lost Mandy? I am not convinced um, that that is secure enough. Now, I don't know why it's like that. I have no idea why Skywatcher uh, make these mounts and then the clamping system is not very good. I'll be honest with you guys and girls, they're okay for like Vixen Dovetail, but like for the Lost Mandy type, I don't know. I don't really get it. But, um, they tend to make the clamping not so great and I just don't, I just can't understand why that is. I know the mounts are cheap but like things like that are the things that like well I paid a lot of money for a mount as it is but with the clamping system to be like a bit iffy this is where you've got to up the game and the thing is it's not just Skywatch here there's quite a lot of other brands like Celestron Ioptron, you name it, all those brands, they are good mounts, don't get me wrong, but the clamping systems you get with them are not, they're not, they're okay, but they're not brilliant. And I think they've done it obviously to keep costs down and make it so that if you did have an uprated clamping system, then you have to pay a lot, lot more money. So that's the trouble you get with a lot of the, the lower brand, cheaper mounts. And I mean cheap, meaning two grams under, is classed as a cheap mount. And believe me, that is definitely true what I'm saying. If you want to pay really good money for a mount, then expect to pay £2,000 plus. All right? And that's regarded as a very good mount. But to be honest with you, this is the problem you get for a lot of the cheaper budget mounts is the clamping system and that's why I've looked into um, getting uh, this pr awesome product from AMD so if you like watching my video please hit the like button and uh, if you're new to the channel please subscribe on to my channel and please share this video again share this idea out there's probably a few people have never done this uh, before and they wanted to purchase a better clamping system for the mount and this video will help them massively, particularly if you've got an NEQ6 mount. And also, 
please hit the bell as well. So if you want to find out any more videos coming out and you want to get notified, please hit the bell so that you guys and girls don't miss out. So from that on, if you want to find out what I've got from AMD, keep watching and let's do this. So we take a closer look on the ADM dual saddle upgrade. Now this is for the NEQ6. They do many variety of dual saddles for a lot of mounts, particular the Skywatcher. Uh, they will cover the Celestron and the Orion mounts as well. And they do some, some of the Ioptron mounts as well. But uh, this one is particularly useful. Uh, this one fits purely for the NEQ6. There are different uh, models of this, the Celestron AVX, uh, the Iaptron ZEQ, or the HEQ Fire Mouse, but they're all separate devices. But this saddle will fit the NEQ6 or EQ6 and the AZ EQ6 GT. Now they will fit those mounts. So we're going to take a closer look in the box. Now this is usually wrapped in bubble wrap, but um, we'll take it out and it's covered in the polythene bag. There's no instructions, which, okay, I don't think you really need it, but it would be nice to see some instructions uh, with the AMD. But uh, as we can see here, it's quite a heavy lump. I think it weighs around about probably a kilo, maybe, a, yeah, probably a kilogram here, definitely. And as you can see, this is just aluminium ionized in black. And the aluminium used the 6061 aluminium, and it's got the stainless steel as well. So it's very well made, and you can see here it can fit both the Vixen dovetail and the Lost Mandy brackets. So it's quite a heavy lump and there is a saddle plate on there. Now it looks to me it's already installed but we're going to take, take a close look. The clamping devices are really good. They've got locating dowel pins here as well, stainless steel dowel pins so it looks to me like it gives it a bit more sturdy on the adjustable clamping system. These are all aluminium knobs as well. I do like the uh, the nice AMD, AMD style um, logo on there. It makes it pretty smart. Looks to me very well built. Now the price for this is £136, which you think is quite expensive. But think about it in a closer perspective that if you want a high quality clamping device and you want to protect your optics, you know, you don't want to drop your optics on the floor or any delicate cameras, then this is a good investment for the long run and for the long term. So this will give a very good positive and more reliable clamping. Fortunately it doesn't come with tools, and which is a real shame. Considering it costs £136, you would expect uh, some kind of instructions or tools with it. But not to worry, um, we're going to take one close bugbear on this. Now I'm using a 316's Allen key and there's one thing I've noticed straight away is it looks to me they have used, and we will take them out, the stainless steel Allen bolts. Now, I'm sure you have to take these out anyway to, to readjust the saddle. We're just going to lift her out and have a closer look. So this is the pug. It looks to me you can mount it in different positions. So obviously this is mounted on like a small position here. But I don't really like that. So I really like to position on the highest amount of pugs here. So evenly space out the load. So there are two positions, 
one close together and then you've got two uh, wider apart now the big bugbear and I'm not really happy with this and I need to highlight this now when you're going to put a lot of weight now the NEQ6 can is designed to take up to about 20 kilograms of weight now what I'm not convinced and I need to highlight this is yes they've used high quality stainless steel allen bolts but it looks to me if we take a closer look if it looks to me that they have used one quarter imperial threaded bolts and it looks like they're only probably half an inch thread in there which I find it very strange now there might be high quality uh, probably high strength allen bolts but I'm not convinced uh, that these what I feel is going to hold 20 kilograms now I have studied mechanical engineering I know the composites of uh, strengths tensile strengths uh, working them out and and so forth stainless steel is very strong don't get me wrong however they could be a bit bigger in other words I could have made them at least three eighths of allen bolts uh, I, it probably is just fine it's probably it's it's completely adequate for your setup but when you're putting a lot of weight like a triplet refractor in there or your big Newtonian or Schmidt Cassegrain and you're putting more expensive CMOS or CCD astral cameras on there you don't want these to fail um, so I would like to have seen them bigger bolts to be honest with you and three apes would have been more than adequate to be honest with you but we'll see anyway um, it's not a bad thing I'm not saying they're gonna fail if it's designed to take a certain amount of weight then okay I'll live with that but from the look of it the, the puck looks good quality and high strength so I'm guessing it will withstand uh, the, the pressure so at the moment it looks to me there's two different sizes on the puck but it only fits um, the smaller holes which I would like to have seen the bolts to be spread apart as well um, but um, what I might do is I'm going to order some high uh, tensile steel bolts which are carb which are 12.8 so those 12.8 grade bolts are going to be a lot stronger than these massively stronger that are guaranteed to hold the weight and believe me when you're putting a lot of weight on these you want to protect your investment now these are probably okay for the time being but we'll test it out all right i'm going to take the risks like always to prove to you guys girls all right if these are work that's fine but they're not boosting my confidence i'd rather have uh, something a lot lot stronger now upon closer inspection we've got the EQ5 mount saddle plate right now what's got me is this is the NEQ6 and then this is the EQ5 now this NEQ6 saddle plate has smaller bolts so what the hell is going on I mean seriously who thought of this now what I don't get is these bolts are three apes these are three apes bolts using the one quarter allen key these are a lot stronger than the NEQ6 bolts so why is that possible I don't know these will give me a lot more confidence than the ones that are supplied with the NEQ6 bolts so the NEQ6 
saddle plate has smaller bolts and this is what I mean don't get me wrong they could be strong enough but they're not boosting me much confidence because these are a lot more robust uh, than these and I'm not making this up this is this is the actual plate and you can tell straight away these are much bigger than these and this is for the AnyQ6 mount this is designed for more weight now you, this has got less weight and this is what I don't get this is designed for 9 to 10 kilograms this is supposed to withstand 20 kilograms so why is this got smaller bolts than this so I don't get that I really don't get that so I, I think this is either a design flaw or something like that but I'm not happy with that now there could be only one reason why these are smaller bolts but I can't understand it there should be bigger bolts like that on the NEQ5 so I thought I'd point this out now it's either a manufacturer's fault or there's a there is a main problem with that but to be honest with you But to be honest with you, I like the build quality, don't get me wrong. However, the bolt security needs to be readdressed because that is not right. This is more than adequate. This is what I expect to see. So, as you can see guys and girls, that's why we need to change it. Now, at the moment, I'm still waiting for those bolts. Um, which the weather's causing havoc with a lot of deliveries so I'm going to chance it test it out with the existing bolts maybe I'm overreacting I don't know but it's not boosting my confidence as much because considering the EQ5 has got better bolts than this um, I don't know but I'm going to chance it and like I say, I prove to you guys and girls that I do videos, product reviews, and I do give a good, general, honest opinion. And uh, it's not there to slay companies. It's there to uh, help companies improve on their products so that you guys and girls get the very best uh, astronomical um, accessories. You name it. I mean, you pay a lot of money for what you get. And I think, you know, this video uh, helps a lot of companies improve on their products i'm not here to just slate products i always give out a good reason why i feel there needs to be improvements if there is a certain reason we'll get to find out when we take the the saddle head off the skywatcher so there may be a reason behind it don't know guys and girls but we're gonna see so as you can see you notice there are Allen keys. Now, I believe they're either 3mm or 2.5. Now, I can't remember exactly, but I have an Allen key that fits those. I'm guessing they're probably 3mm Allen keys. So, what you do is you locate each of them and you take each one off. Alright, you slacken them off. Now, it doesn't matter, you slack them off. Sometimes they can be tight, some can't, sometimes they're just not. But they'll crack off just like that. And again, do each side bit by bit. Okay. Like so. And just keep going round until the plate will come off. So again, keep slacking it. And there you go. So once you're slacking all of them, so that's the original plate, that's the original clamping system removed. So upon inspection, I couldn't understand now why ADM have adapted uh, the, the smaller bolts. Because of this retainer, this lock ring retainer, I can see why they've done it. But what I don't understand is they could have still made them free apes anyway and made them a bit thicker. So the bolts probably 
they probably adapted that but personally it would have been better with the bigger bolts I'm sure they could have found a way that they could fit that these bolts are tight and all we do is you know it doesn't matter where you want to place them you just slot it in there in place so placing the plate like so doesn't matter either way all right you get your allen key find the screws find the screws okay there's one all right and you just tighten each one up first bit by bit so find the other screw again once you found it tighten her up bit by bit so that's one find the other there's the other one again just nip them up first don't tighten them up yet until you're satisfied right once they're tightened up it still be a bit loose but you've got to make sure that the plate sits flush right nice and flush along uh, this part here all right needs to fit nice and flush once you've got it nice and flush then you can tighten each one okay a bit at a time so like half a turn go to the next one half a turn go to the next one half a turn keep doing that all the way around half a turn next one half a turn next one quarter of a turn and just keep doing that bit by bit until don't get them too tight so you strip the threads just nip them up like so and then last one as you can see there I'm just using this allen key all right this will give out plenty of torque all right if you use anything bigger you could strip these out and you don't want to do that so get them as tight as you can and there you go right that's going nowhere all right now what you notice that once you fit this this actually feels a lot lighter than the other original saddle clamp so um, already there is a massive uh, difference it's actually a lot lighter so um, it will fit the balancing so again not to worry you can adjust the balancing but as long as there's a tight and this is nice and flush this 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 clamp is nice and flush to the uh, the head you should be good to go so now we've got this saddle plate on there we're just going to double check these allen bolts just make sure that they are tight as well not too tight but we've got to make sure that there's no free play on those two on those two bolts so using the 316s just nip them up like so using these don't use um, a bit set with a ratchet or something like that because you might actually strip those out so just long enough that they're nipped up and they can't go anywhere so that's installed now we're now going to get the telescope I'm gonna to have to use one hand I can't use this hand because my hand's pretty bad so we're going to lift the whole telescope set up so you get the uh, telescope service triplet using one hand and I'm just going to mount it on there like so using one hand Ok, 
okay so that's clipped in there we're just going to I'm holding it by one hand I'm using my bad hand to screw on the clamps just going to lift her up a bit like so do the bottom one there you go straight away I didn't need to do a lot of clamping there but that feels a lot better now I lift the horse telescope with a good hand if I had both hands I, this would have been a lot easier but sorry guys and girls wow look at that already it sits nice and straight as you see no horrible angle or gap the plate sits nice and flush all right and that's what you want you can tell straight away you can tell straight away that this plate sits nice onto the um, onto the head and uh, that's what you got to be look you got to look out for just make sure that's nice and straight but well, as you can see straight away looking at the setup that is massively better yeah that's nice and straight as well so don't get me wrong guys and girls apart from the bolts apart from the bolts that put me off slightly the plate sits nice and flush and the lost mandy is not at an angle now which was absolutely really was quite scary um, with the uh, skywatcher one so don't get me wrong skywatcher is okay but when you've come to fit the, uh, fit the lost mandy it sometimes doesn't sit right on the skywatcher however on here it fits like a dream so apart from the bolts the clamp is beautiful and it really is a positive drive because you can really slide it as well so you can actually slide it along as well so you don't have to use the tube rings and slacking it off that way you can always slide it on there but it's a lot more of a positive drive there and I'm really impressed with that so don't get me wrong the clamps brilliant so what a massive improvement and uh, you can tell even from here because it's CNC build, the aluminium and these steel dowels keeping the clamping force nice and straight as well so that is a massive improvement and as you can see here with the standard sky watcher here you just got the, just the normal clamps so there is no uh, dowels that keeps it straight so as you can see there there's a lot of free play and slot there and uh, yeah don't get it wrong it's okay it's a decent piece of kit but that was off-putting it was okay for the Vixen not so great for the uh, Lost Monday and that's why I needed to replace it so because there's no locating dowels and it's just relying on tensile springs and the actual bolts then uh, yeah so apart from that awesome already there and I'm really impressed so that guys and girls what do you reckon definitely definitely a good clamping system without a doubt and to be honest with you it's definitely worth that investment I mean 136 pounds sounds expensive but it's a lot better clamping system than the Skywatcher, without a doubt. So yeah, you can buy this product from Robber Valley Optics or First Light Optics. Again, the AMD series are available for other mounts like the iOptron, the Skywatcher, some Celestrons, uh, you name it. There is quite a lot of quite a lot of products available for those mounts as well. So again, check those retailers out. You will be waiting quite some time 
because obviously stocks is a bit low and we now waited literally three weeks for this to arrive but don't get me wrong I do like the, the, the metal they use, the um, high tensile aluminium and the stainless steel. The clamping force is brilliant. It's actually quite lightweight as well, which was also quite amazing. It sits nice and perfect on the head and it looks a lot solid now. Right, it doesn't seem to gonna slip and when you lock it in place, it clips in there and you know that you, you know, despite the thousands of pounds with the kit you got here like this setup you know it's not going to come off and it's going to cause damage to your telescope or your imaging setup so apart from those bolts that sort of sort of like put me off a bit using the one quarter stainless steel bolts it sort of put me off a bit I don't know what sort of material they've used but it seems to me it's holding uh, this setup. I mean, this setup weighs around about a good 15 kilograms. All right, it's quite a heavy beast, uh, this triplet. All right, and regarding you've got all the uh, other Lost Mandys and the guide scope, the QHY9 with its filter wheel system, and all the power at the top. Don't get me wrong, it's, um, it's quite a bit, but it holds quite well. All right, so the bolts they've used, I wish they could have done it uh, probably three, three apes, thread, bolts, that could have been better. So having said that, would I recommend it? I will reward it four stars because of those bolts. If it was a bit better bolts on there, I would have definitely rewarded it five stars. But because of those bolts, I get it four. But apart from that, would I recommend it? Yes, I would. It's definitely an investment and it will protect your setup. And you know you've got the confidence on the AMD products. All right, they are really are good, good brands. All right, well trusted brands for many, many years. And that's why I like AMD. So I don't know the reasons behind those bolts. I really don't know. But apart from that, definitely a good buy without a doubt. So that concludes my video. Please hit a like button if you like what you see. And again, if you're new to the channel and you just visited my channel, please subscribe onto my channel. And also from subscribing, please hit the bell. Because believe me, I've got loads more videos coming out soon. By hitting that bell, you'll get notified when the next one, so you don't get so, so you don't miss out. And please share this video. Please share in the video, we'll also push it out into the community and probably help someone else who's also considering upgrading their dual saddle on their existing Skywatcher mount. So, thanks again, thanks for watching and I wish you all clear skies.